the spring of third grade, I transferred to a new school on the first day of class. I'm Mama Jiggy. Oh no, we interrupt this epic raid to bring you Mama Jiggy flashback. This oddly timed flashback is making me nostalgic for Attack on Titan. I could barely talk when I introduced myself. But maybe this means Mama it Jiggy focus, which is cool. Year, but plenty of students knew each other from is this the previous power? term. Condom? Is that a condom man? Who would want to get to know someone boring and awkward like me? Mama Jiggy! It was kind of hard to hear Mirio. what you were trying to say up there earlier, but I was thinking. Oh, uh, that's tell us that you like damn. Heroes? Was that it? So touching. Where yeah. they go way back. That's been established. That day. If you had to pick everything, a favorite, who would it be? Like that in that state. You talked to me when no one else would. You were shining. He's always been this way. Like the sun. And you know he's not doing it so he can feel better about himself. You know, so he can tell himself he's a good person. He's not posturing. He has no agenda. He just wants to talk to him. And here we go. Back to the, the raid. Can I do it too? This is making me very Can nervous, speaking of Attack on Titan. As brightly as you do. Oof. It's really beautiful having that perspective on Mirio, you know, seeing him from the eyes of a friend. And I think the answer is an obvious yes, he can. I think it would be a lot easier if he gets out of his own way, you know? This might sound really weird, but I feel like just acknowledging the good traits in others means they exist in yourself. Or at least the potential does. He wouldn't see Mirio for, for who Mirio actually was if he didn't have the important conceptual understanding of those qualities and therefore the ability to be that as well. And you know what's sort of a great thing about that? It just takes one moment. You know, you can not be something for your entire life and then suddenly become that thing. You can fail countless times to the point where you feel like failure is just baked into your, your very being only to succeed at the next iteration. And it's really difficult to have this perspective, but I think once you reach those moments or reach those points, you realize that all those failures or moments where you weren't what you wanted to be led up to that moment and maybe were essential for it. The only danger I think is not having the aim, not being aware of that and I mean, he clearly is aware of it. He's aspiring to be it, so why, why can't he be? And here's an opportunity right here, you know? Although that's part of what makes me nervous. There's nothing that matters more to these guys than their bond with their boss and their brothers. Look at Aizawa and Deku running side by side. Hell yeah. But we haven't caught sight of the top brass yet. They're probably underground, hiding. How's that supposed to be loyalty? Forcing their henchmen to fight for them <laughs> while they run away isn't manly at Man, all. Man, this guy's moral compass something else these days. Is he using it? Is he using it? Yes, we have entered sepia mode. Bubble girl, you handle the third. Damn. Tentacles in this show just in general are really overpowered. Oh, bubble girl. <laughs> I don't think why they call her that. Damn, these bubbles, they're such a minor nuisance to my my eyes. Mirio is being so kind right now, like running. Let me go take a look. Million, if there you we go. go through, you'll be naked. It's okay. Mirio's <laughs> costume was constructed from a special fiber made of his own hair. Pretty cool. It's designed so it becomes permeable when he activates his quirk. Why didn't he use that in the school? <laughs> Did he just want to show off his willy? Unfortunately, breaking through it's not going to be easy. Deku? But he's an idiot if he thinks it does. Or Kirishima? Kirishima is taking everyone else's light. For both of them, even better. It's a metaphor for the whole show. They can both punch through walls. We need to keep moving. Lead the way, Mirio. Ultimate hero. Unofficial number one hero. But he was so cute. <laughs> what happened? Whoa, that's intense. His quirk is Inception. Iranaka's quirk mimicry lets him enter objects and control them as he would his own body. Whoa, that's insane. He's not supposed to be able to control anything drugs. more than a damn refrigerator. It's the drugs. Remember who we're dealing with here? Dollars to donuts, he's using a performance enhancer. Yep, yep. We have to think quickly if we want to catch them. This is your moment to shine. They're gonna Momo escape with the girl, and we're all gonna die down here. Thomas, Step out of it. No way that's gonna happen. There you go. Understand? You can do this, Sun Eater. <laughs> Sun Eater, that's such a cool name. I can still Yes! Pavilion, come go back. for it. No, let him go. Speed is what matters right now. But this is a danger for him too, though, right? Because he's extra torn up about his inaction last time. Come on. He's like swung back the other way in terms of like to. not being patient, right? Well, what have we here? Looks like some state authorized thugs crashed our party. State Isn't authorized that thugs. Strange? I feel like that's going to be a bigger thing coming up in later seasons, or later episodes. Pros should save their strength for when we reach the target. There you go, step up. Go on, I can handle Someone's about to take a swordfish to the knee, and, and, and have their career ended. The big three, something. <laughs> Lay down your sword! There you go. My quirk! Have you not heard of Erasure? Erasure? I guess it keeps a low profile, right? Now they know. Of Aerie, but our job's to slow you down. Quirks are no. 
We still have fists he has a gun, and which... weapons. Yeah, right, right. I read all about these guys in the briefing. Tentacle overpowered. I can these three Powering up. continues. These tons of takoyaki at the fat agency. <laughs> so octopus has become one of my specialties. It's not smart for all of us to See, fight. Them. Lobster, crayfish as well. Fat gum. I know this is something I can do on my own. Yeah, I mean, he didn't. He just already did it, didn't he? He like just defeated them. <laughs> Damn, he's knocked him out with a backhand slap. You have to take care of Miria. He's definitely going to try too hard. Right. So please keep him safe. Correct. Yeah, I really want to believe in Mirio, and I definitely have faith in him to believe he can he can do what he needs to do. But there's definitely an element of danger to his thought process right now because, as I mentioned last episode, he was sitting with his failure for so long, waiting for this opportunity. That is such a great thing for his motivation now, but also creates a potential blind spot where there are situations where caution is better, you know? But he went down that road once and, and felt punished for it and made himself sort of personally responsible for it. Seems kind of risky. There's nothing about I the situation that doesn't carry risk. He's yeah. stronger than anybody here. Wow. The pressure to do things perfectly sometimes leaves him feeling crushed. Yeah, I know that feeling. And yet, he's risen to become one of UA's big three under those conditions. That's pretty amazing, considering his mental state. I'm gonna have to knock you out. Sorry, this might hurt a bit. Oh no, what just happened? Oh no. Surprise! Oh damn! Made you flinch, didn't I? I know you're in a bind here, but you can't hesitate when it comes to us. I love how the villain is defeating him and giving him advice at the same time. You can't kill us, can you? Bit of a handicap, don't you What was you that? Think? This power lets him steal anything his opponents have equipped. Oh, it's an actual power. Boss took us from the trash heap and gave us a new life. Even trash has its pride. In a weird way, he might even relate to that because he was just talking about how worthless he was and then Mirio kind of showed up and lent him a hand. I feel like this comes up a lot in the show where the character's direction is critically altered just by who reaches out to them, who lends a hand to them. For example, it was All for One that lent a hand to Shigaraki that made him so loyal and led him on that path, largely. Although I guess more commonly, it's not a direct interaction, but just someone who is a figure who inspires others. Stain was an inspiration for this entire villain thing, right? And obviously All Might was an inspiration to literally everyone. And there's something true and maybe dangerous about that, you know? Like, I think everyone needs something to believe. Even. And sometimes I feel like without the awareness of that, without the awareness of that as a necessity of life, we're sort of victims of circumstance to what ideas come along first that feel good, or who reaches out a hand to us in our worst states, or what offers us something to believe in when we're living in sort of an emotional or intellectual void. Because if you have to believe in something, you don't want to leave that thing up to just randomness, because there's all sorts of terrible things to believe in and terrible people to believe in. And it's sort of like, if you haven't chosen your own beliefs, if you haven't chosen your own path, it's a pretty good chance that somebody else has chosen it for you. And of course you get the full spectrum. You get people on both sides who are making their choice in a cognizant manner. You know, it's what they think is right. But you imagine that a lot of people are not really all that critical about it and are sort of doing something akin to following stimuli or following what feels good or just anything that they can latch onto that gives them some kind of hope or some kind of belief structure or lifts their spirits out of whatever, you know, negative state they happen to be in. What's wrong, Amajiki? Flashing back again. I love this Amajiki focus. We tried to figure out the different ways we could utilize our powers in the future as adults. <laughs> <laughs> he was a laughing stock. Right, he's not a natural. Such a great touch, having that be part of his character. You're clearly not very good at controlling your quirk just yet. That may be true now, but next time or the time after, I'll get it right! Right. <laughs> You know, there's this idea that I, I've heard so much and I used to believe it, that like, this is foolishness. But the older I get and the more I experience, the more I think that this actually is, is correct. You know, I think that this kind of outlook, this kind of optimism is correct, not in its estimation of current events, but as a practicable strategy, you know, as a process, which to me speaks more to what I want out of life. I distinctly remember a state for a lot of my life, especially in adolescence and young adulthood, where I was really, really down on myself. And because I was convinced I was intelligent, I thought that the things I, I estimated about myself were just fact. You know, they were like dead fact. And anybody who tried to tell me differently, I would rationalize their argument away. And so I understand the trap of that. I understand the trap of not seeing yourself as worthy or not seeing yourself as having positive traits or that success for myself is impossible or that I was born with some kind of intrinsic dark cloud that hangs around me that doesn't allow for good things to happen, etc. I mean, even if those things were true right in that moment, that just speaks to that moment. And so I think it's Mirio's stance that's correct. It's Mirio's stance that is a process that works because it allows for repeated attempts. It allows for change over time. It allows for focusing on 
attempt and effort and action. It allows for a decreased focus on one's inner turmoil and having this constant self-struggle, this self-argument through one's own faulty logical structure and instead just like taking action, which I think a lot of times will will surprisingly and sometimes accidentally even lead to satisfying places despite ourselves and despite our beliefs. And so in its way, it's sort of a miracle that Mama Jakey made it this far given his obstacles. But if I had to take a guess, I'd guess it's just because he kept acting. He kept plugging forward with it because of Mirio's influence and just seeing him work hard at it. And so he also worked hard at it. And even though he didn't believe he was good at anything, he became good at something. You know, I think there's a, a real insight there. It's not about one's mood as much. It's not about one's self-analysis. It's not about the blowing up into eternity of one's own flaws in the current moment. And instead it's just like, just working on it, getting out of one's own way. If I worry about messing up, I'm done. My mind goes completely blank and I freeze. That's relatable too. I become an amazing hero. The only reason I'm able to do my best is because I have you here inspiring me. For real. Even though I know you get crazy nervous, you keep working hard and refuse to run away. <laughs> so I don't want to lose to you. Right, right. There's a common element between them. You know what else I think? Deep down, <laughs> you're a smiley, <laughs> fun, super cheerful guy. That's not that impressive, but all right. <laughs> So if I'm the sun, you must be something even more amazing than that. Have Did confidence in yourself, Tamaki. I've got a life that can swallow even the suns. <laughs> nice. Octopus arms full of thick muscles to absorb the shock and protect himself from any- Thank you for that unnecessary exposition, anime. <laughs> for the last two years at UA, I've like trained hard to master animal, my though. quirk, expressing several manifestations at once. Swordfish increasing their sizes. in the knee. <laughs> I'll be so happy if that happens, for real. What food was was this? Chimera. Pretty cool. Hey, hey. This quirk does have a lot of depth, interestingly. Time to eat! Right as quirk is eat. There's a parallel there. Well, he will never get to eat because he is now dead. Oh, oh he bit him. I have that quirk too. It's like the perfect anti-hero for I'd actually say you two are a match. Him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Eraser must have realized this. That's why we went for him. Yeah, yeah. Leave it to Aizawa to know exactly what's what's important in the moment. <laughs> right, stealing. Damn, that's a powerful attack that. team. That's not enough to stop my crystallization! And then there's this guy who is sort of a boring one. <laughs> Waiting for this swordfish stab. I'll manifest the neurotoxin from an octopus's saliva in my oh, arm. Oh man. Oh man, that's that's clever. Did you just Those steal it? tentacles were too big to steal before, but small ones are no problem. Oh, man. Their teamwork is incredible. It is. And also, Gem Man is not bad. Bonds are no, you'll still be arrested soon. He's talking like Mirio right now. He's literally like pinned to a wall, but still optimistic. One of us didn't fit into society and was tossed aside. One was betrayed by his lover and buried beneath a mountain of debt. Oof, debt, that's dark. That's real dark. When it was discovered that the gems he produced were worthless fakes, he was beaten within an inch of his life. Yeah, but the debt though. <laughs> the debt, you know, crushes you. Who cares what happens after this? He picked right. us up right. and gave us worth again. Right. It's just so amazing how like that just trumps everything, right? Like it's more like they're brainwashed. Loneliness, basic human needs, you know, for all like our brain power, it just comes down to the most basic things a lot of the time. It's sort of bizarre, but any deficiency in like a basic human need creates both an opportunity for growth and adventure as well as a danger. Because those feelings can be so intense, you can apply that need to the wrong thing, and then it's really, really hard to Severed that because that means going back to that state of, of emptiness, that void. That's why people end up in like bad relationships and bad friendships and bad habits. It's like desperately looking for just something, anything to either have in your life socially or to believe in or to give oneself positive esteem. You know, it's really tricky. And I can't think of any examples in the show yet, but it might happen with the villains. You know, it might happen with maybe twice where they do the difficult work of like rejecting the thing that is their base, even though that's painful and thinking for themselves. And that's usually a really satisfying thing to watch because it's admirable. You know, to actually be able to suffer through hardship, through not having the things we need, and yet still be a positive force in one's own life, you know? We may be a bunch of trash, but that doesn't mean we don't have strong bonds. Yeah, I got this strong swordfish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm really waiting for this swordfish. <laughs> Did he eat my crystals when you weren't looking? Yeah, he can eat other things as well. It doesn't have to be, you know, animals. Teacher friend? That would be too dark for the show. I can't understand your circumstances or anger. I do understand your strong bonds. Right. Now, there is a parallel between him and these villains. 
Multiple parallels. And friends don't eat friends, do they? That'd be a little bit dark. <laughs> oh no, that's... I was having a great time. <laughs> so given the way the last episode ended, I didn't expect a specific character focus, but I really enjoyed it. I think he's a really cool character, and I think it, in many ways it's, it's really respectable that he was able to act despite his circumstances, you know, or to act despite his insecurities. And I actually think that that, in, in conjunction with Mirio, actually raises an interesting idea, you know, for all the obsession we have about one's disposition, for all the talk we do about motivation and self-love and things like that. I think in many cases, or at least for certain people, the answer is not to like solve all those problems first necessarily. You know, I think it's possible to act despite insecurity. It's possible to succeed without even believing in one's own success, which sort of runs counter to a common message of like, believe in yourself and, and you can succeed. I think one interpretation of that people often have is like, well, I don't believe in myself, so I can't succeed, which I would firmly argue is not the case. I mean, the important thing is what you do. And a lot of times things are right around the corner, even though they seem like they don't exist. And so I think that is sort of Mirio's gift to him. It's that Mirio just keeps going. Momojiki's not able to harness Mirio's powers of self-belief, right? But he is able to emulate him in terms of working hard. And we see that has obvious benefits. I mean, he's a member of the big three, just like Mirio is. He's able to hold off these three villains just like he said he, he would. And something I've talked about before that I think is interesting is that I think we're, we're sort of wired to forgive a lot of things about people's personalities, you know, a lot of their intrapersonal flaws, let's say. If they can show up and do the things they need to do and we expect them to do in critical moments, you know, there's such a powerful effect of that. It takes priority over a lot of other things, you know, it takes priority over what might otherwise be considered personal defects or emotional defects or whatever. To me, that's sort of an inspiring thought because it's, it's sort of a more self-directed thing. It allows me to lean less on sort of the chaos of my own mind and figuring myself out and having this perfect inner disposition or now navigating the complexities of social situations and being like likable. There's just so many variables in that it's, it's really difficult to think one's way through that into a point of mastery. And instead to sort of focus on like a task at hand, you know, or like a, a large goal or something that is actionable. And then just trusting that the other things sort of will fall into place as a result of that, because I, I believe that's what happens. And I believe if you focus on something that's personally meaningful that you feel really connected to and you, you work hard on that and you start to see slowly and steadily the benefits of that hard work and that feeds into your, your personality and your self-identity, the more your anxieties, your inner anxieties are recognized just for what they are, which is thoughts in light of the things you actually have in your hands, you know, the life you actually have built for yourself. And so that ends up coming out and making you more free and having those strengths be noticed by others. And it sort of solves a lot of the problems organically, in my opinion, rather than like this expectation of just being perfectly mentally healthy all the time and being inwardly solid all the time, you know, it's sort of an unrealistic goal. Whereas getting up every day and working towards something is realistic, in my opinion. So yeah, that's the end of this episode. See you next time when this time for sure, Mirio swoops in and just crushes them. Although it will not be with his willy, I guess, because of this new, new clothes thing. <laughs>